it's that time again we are live <laughs> oh, fucking hell. we are never live we are never live not, welcome to not once two's company three's a podcast a podcast where we occasionally mm. speak about stuff i yeah i just wanted to say as yep. well i took your advice oh yeah i got myself some um tanning moisturizer oh very good mm, oh, so we can look luscious exactly since we're now um youtubers yeah i mean you know we've got to make sure that we're looking on fleek for the people that's exactly mm, right Mitchell's. not just our eyebrows not just our eyebrows or no. our terrible terrible hair with very visible roots that i have at the moment <laughs> but yeah. yes yeah. we don't speak about that anyway it's two's company three's a podcast mm. again happy wednesday everybody yes. everybody everybody happy everyone. wednesday if you're listening on release day if you're not listening on release day well, get your shit together and listen on release day. Yeah, yeah. I hope you're having a great time wherever you are in time. Absolutely. How's but that? for now, we're about to read the average number of pages in a comic book because it's time for TCTP, a full set of adult teeth. Two seconds from being on you like white or rice in a glass of milk on a paper plate in a snowstorm. I'm going to put my foot so far up your ass, the water on my knee will quench your thirst. Come on. I have heard this it. This is a gimme for you, man. Yeah, I have heard it. And I, my mind's going to like 10 different movies. Come on, which one? No, I'm not going to get this. Major Pain. Oh, 1995. Yeah. Listen, as much as I gave that movie praise, like a very small amount of praise, yeah, yeah, a yeah. few episodes, however many episodes ago, I have only seen it once. Okay, all right. Well, the, the only thing I distinctly remember is the fact that if he's in pain elsewhere, like if he gets shot or a broken leg, yeah. his idea of dealing with the pain is to break his own finger. Oh, so okay. that way, it, there's a joke at the beginning of the film where he's like, someone's been shot in war. He's like, hold still, hold still. He's like, oh, I'm dying. And then he goes, snap. He goes, oh, my finger. <laughs> you know? Okay. And, then, and then he tries it because the whole story is, is that yeah. he's ex-military. He's killed everybody. He's the best in the business. Yeah. There's no more war because he's literally wiped out fucking everybody. Okay. And then he's in charge of like a, a, a kid's boot camp or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. As I said, it's been a vlo- very long time since I've seen it. Breaking so- kids' fingers and such. Yeah, there's mm. a particular moment where a kid's crying about something and his, no. his idea of dealing with that situation is, you just got to let me break your finger. And then like he gets stopped. He doesn't oh, actually do okay. it. But that's the, that's the scene where you're like, yeah. he's going to break this fucking child. Oh, he's wow. going to rip it right <laughs> off. But no, he doesn't. Jesus. Well, yeah. Movies in the 90s, eh? Comedy. Yeah. yeah. Welcome what? to Two's Company 3's a podcast. Mm. A podcast where we occasionally talk about movies and stuff. Yeah, every now and then. Yeah. Yes. My name is Mitchell, along with my co-host. Dylan. Yes. <laughs> and we are available on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can listen to us or watch us on... Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube. Big, Big summer, summer blowout. blowout. The links are here if you That's haven't right. seen it already. Yeah, so just, just down below, unless you're listening to us, then, I mean, your screen's probably closed. So probably don't just look down. That'd yeah. be weird. I would, I would assume if you're listening to this on hmm. Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, or wherever, YouTube. you would have already <laughs> yes. gone to our social media accounts and given us a good old follow and a share and a like and a subscribe and all those things. On the odd chance they haven't, they now know. Yeah, they Simple now know. That. But Simple if you are watching yes. this and if this is your first time hmm. to TCT, be welcome and thank you and there are links to social media are in the bottom left hand corner no wait the bottom left hand wow, corner I'm, of your viewing yeah see mm. I'm pointing they here they are literally right here yeah they're yeah. not on this side Twitter Facebook they're over Instagram. that side yes but anyway we are Two's Company Three's a podcast and you are now listening to our Wednesday episode Wednesday That's right. mornings at 7.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time yeah and then Fridays at 7.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time <laughs> yeah yes. so anyway. get that locked in into your schedule and yeah let's kick things off this yeah, week absolutely. straight into the news topics now news topics are a bit light as yes. we said you yes. know there's been a few things that have come and gone you know over the week but there's a few things that really mm. stand out one of them in particular that you put in the notes I did I didn't look at this at all but Okay. You, know, you mentioned there's a particular superhero film yes. uh, coming to Netflix, which has sparked my interest. That's right. This simply is fre- because it's a superhero movie. That's right. Coming of to course. Netflix. Exactly. And yeah. this was fresh news as of this morning. Um, Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer were spotted on set of the new Netflix superhero film Thunder Force. Thunder Force. And the link okay. has pictures to their outfits and that. Now, the outfits are somewhat generic. They just- Kind of look like superhero thing, like yeah. like they just kind of look like superheroes, but they both look fucking miserable in this picture. They do, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, but I think I, I mean assume- whether they're just like stinking fucking sweating hot, like in oh, those costumes. This could be mid take. They could have been shooting for fourteen hours. Like who the fuck yeah. knows? But I will say it, it's 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 got to be a comedy. 
Yeah, it, it has, has to be a no comedy. There's no fucking way. No, because this is as, not far, a as far as the plot that we know, it's literally just two regular women one day uh, through some miraculous event yeah. gain superhero powers, and that's basically it. Do we know if this is a, an original story or based on a comic book of just like two There was no women. mention of any kind of comic book or anything. So yeah, I okay. feel like it might be an original. So I'm curious about that as well because, I mean, shit, almost all the fucking superhero stories have been told already. So. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. you've got like really good, you know, TV series is based on mm. comic books that, you know, people didn't know much about the comics until the TV mm. series. For example, The Boys, that's a popular comic book series. Yes. But Amazon's just come through and steamrolled the fuck with like a, an amazing production. Yeah. Now yeah. everybody knows about it. Yeah. I don't know whether they, this is something that's based on a pre-established if any source. Of, if any of know. the listeners or viewers can tell us, leave a comment and let us know whether or not this is actually a previous I- idea. Yeah. Or whether this is something new and original, but- um, I mean, it looks fun. Like, I like both of yeah. those actors. We've established this before. I like mm. Melissa McCarthy. I- I've grown on her because yeah. she's- she, Yeah. Like, we've, we've been down this road before. Yeah, she started yeah. out in Bridesmaids, obviously. That's where she yeah. got her fame, where she was good in that, but then yeah. she established herself as that wacky well, actually, sidekick. Well, she was in Gilmore Girls quite what? a lot as well. Well, I I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, I could be completely wrong, but hey. You don't, don't lie, you've watched every single episode. <laughs> what am I talking about? Pop culture genius. Oh god. my god, yeah. Like, share um, and subscribe. And, yeah, and Octavia Spencer, like all the mm. movies that I've seen her in, I don't, th- I can't think of any that have been overly dramatic or like too comedy based. Like she's done it, she's yes. had a, she's had a mixed career. Well, you know, the, uh, the kitchen for me, which we saw in TCTPDTCR, a couple probably, of weeks ago, yeah. oh, couple, it was a couple of months ago. Um, that that was my first uh, experience in her delving outside of the comedic world. Melissa McCarthy. Yes, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Wait, were you talking about Melissa or Octavia? Octavia. Oh, my apologies. Sorry, yeah. completely. Bam. Yeah, Octavia. She said, "Man, dinner for schmucks." You remember Dinner for yeah, Schmucks with Steve Grohl? that's Paul. another one I've only seen she once. She was the but fucking but like uh, the, the, what do you, what do you call them? She was like the animal. Um, oh, I can't remember what. You, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, she was like calling to the turkey or the vulture, and she's like. Oh, like an animal whisperer sort of thing? No, or but was, was she an animal? From Beyond the Dead, like one of those people. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I don't know. But no, seeing her from that, and then I swear, like, I didn't see anything about her career, and then Neck Minute wins an Oscar, and I'm like, I'm sorry? Yeah. Now, she was in that film- I'm sorry? That was, she was in that film about NASA. What was it? Was it NASA? How, like, women were like- I don't know. I'm going to oh, butcher shit. this. Yeah. She won an Oscar for something about space. I'm pretty no, sure. No, I'm sure. No, the one she won a, uh, an Oscar for, I think, was 10 Years a Slave or one Oh, of that the, makes sense. That one. Yeah. I haven't seen it. I'm not sure if she's in it. Yeah. You know, are you. What, the have 10 Years a Slave yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, oh, so I she's haven't defi- seen it. Oh, so she's no. definitely in it, though? I believe so. I believe uh, that's the one she won. No, wait. Maybe it was. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, we know pop that culture geniuses, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> she's an Oscar winning actress. Yes. And Melissa McCarthy, you know, has shown some range and she's in. in ha- what, mm. what are you thinking about? What's on your mind? I, I'm still trying to figure it's out which one she won an Oscar yeah. for. Anyway, this oh, movie look, looks I have a MacBook in front of me. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like, listen, the costumes are interesting. Like, yes. Being a Netflix production, that doesn't mean that it's going to be bad or low budget anymore. No. This thing could no. have a ridiculous budget. It doesn't matter whether it breaks bank at the beginning. It's got no. longevity. Yeah, Because Netflix right. can keep things on there for as long as they want, especially if it's an original uh, original concept. That's so, right. And I feel like, as we've discussed before, this is going to be one that will get a limited theatrical release regardless. Yeah. They're both names, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, mm. look out for that one if you're interested in Thunder Force on Netflix starring yeah. Melissa McCarthy and why, Octavia Spencer. Why yeah. the hell not? That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, speaking of Netflix, I just wanted to jump down the notes a little bit there. Yep. Um, I did recently watch- My name is Dolomite. Dolomite! Yes, yes. I, I got the email from Netflix yeah. saying that that's finally yes. out. And we said a couple of weeks ago when we discussed this, mm. hot scoops on Two's Company 3 is a podcast <gasps> about upcoming films and such. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I tried to keep now, my composure. Now I'm, I'm not going to get into a huge review of it. Yeah, just say I enjoyed it and Good. I thought it was well worth my time. Yeah, um, but I will just say there was one thing that I wanted to bring up. Um, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy. yes, his stand up. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's just, uh, yeah, um, his stand up. So uh, this this really intrigued me. There was an interview he did on one of the late shows. I'm not sure. Stephen which one Colbert, was. by the way. Stephen of Colbert, yeah. <laughs> beautiful. There you go. Yep. Yeah, and um, uh, when Barack Obama. He met him when he was receiving an award. I can't remember which one, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to try and skim the Mark Twain Prize he received. Um, Obama said, "When are you going back to stand up?" Really? And out of everybody over the decades telling him to get back into stand up because Roar and Delirious are amazing. Yeah, it was finally Barack where he was like, eh, 
yeah, that's not a bad idea. If there's you anybody know? to convince Eddie yeah. Murphy, it's the former yeah. president of the United fucking States. That- it couldn't be his fans. No, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, the millions of people begging. Yeah. Like, but no, Barack think- Obama and he's like, yeah, not bad. I think yeah. that comes from the, like, because obviously Eddie Murphy took a back seat for very obvious reasons. Oh. The fact that his comedy was very timey. Yeah. You know, you go, look, you look back at it now and anybody born like after the year 2000 will be offended by shit that he says. Of course. You know, we love it because we're born before the year 2000. No, that's right. Exactly. Um, we're not you know, sensitive Sally. That's right. Mm. So like his comedy is very offensive, but it is very hilarious. Yes. And it's all done in good taste. None of it's like out of, oh, just don't take it out of context. No. But like Barack Obama- like, obviously, he wasn't our president because we're in Australia, no, obviously. But- and despite your thoughts on American politics, mm. whether his policies were good or not in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. But you do know just by watching him on TV and yeah. his Twitter and all that, he seems like a genuine dude. Yeah, he just seems like a dude. Yeah. Simple as like that. Like, you like, could have a mm. beer with this guy. Oh, there's so, so f- many stories of regular guys and also celebrities who just, like, chilled out with him and he was just a guy. Yeah. You know? I would suspect somebody like our current prime minister in Australia, Scott Morrison, to be like, oh, well, Eddie Murphy's oh. thing was offensive and it's it's no, racist no. and it's homophobic, as where Barack Obama, being a black man himself, would be like, yeah, it was it was funny. It was yeah, good. It, <laughs> you it's, know? it's funny. Can you- can you do it again? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, like exactly. that's I, right. So I kind of, it's weird to think of a politician like that where they actually are just a person. But it doesn't. The time it doesn't they're, surprise they're trying to only be politically correct. It doesn't surprise me about Barack Obama though, because mm. he was such a genuine guy. Whether it was just like face value, it was whether it was cover up. Who fucking yeah. knows? I don't care. I do not care. You know, it goes mm. to show that if someone like him can appreciate that style of comedy. Exactly. It goes to show that more people can stand up and go, you know what? It isn't offensive. That's right. You need to get the fuck over yourself. But also, that's the thing. I feel like- And uh, enjoy yourselves. That's 100% correct. Yeah. But I feel like we're at a stage now like where- subscribe. If Eddie, <laughs> if Eddie Murphy um, does end up doing a new special, which I pray to God he does, I feel like he's not going to obviously be throwing the fags out there. And the, I would not think not so. Not a chance. Like, now, this day and age, yeah. that, that those certain terminologies like exactly. fag and, dare I say it, nigger and things like that- Yes. Are-, are I wouldn't even say that word in itself is past its time because that word no. shouldn't be used by anybody other than like that ethnicity to begin with. But I'm saying like in the context of mm. comedy, this day and age, it doesn't fly so well. Yeah. Back exactly. then it was fine. But now no, the age of information, right. like everybody can be offended and, yeah. and put their opinions out there on display for the rest of the world to see and have other people agree with them. Yeah. It makes that kind of comedy hard to fly. But if he, I, the only person I know who does it successfully and has come back and mm. has been successful with keeping that style of comedy, Dave Chappelle. Oh, I knew you were going there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, so, I, and I, I reckon if Eddie sat down and even took like two years yeah. to like perfect this hour worth of comedy. Yeah. Man, he'll nail it. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll be watching every second of it. Absolutely. And I know I'll have a good damn yeah. time. Um, just sidebarring back a second. It yep. was the help that Octavia Spencer won an Oscar for. So- Oh, yeah, right. There you go. Very That's good. All. Cool. I'm, just, I'm just letting you know. I'm Never correcting heard of it. my mistake. It wasn't anyway. 10 years a slave. Uh, orkies. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, um, but that's speaking very of big interesting. Dicks, yeah. Speaking of big dicks. Yes. Um, there uh, was some casting news as well this week. Uh, nothing phenomenal, but Baz Luhrmann's upcoming Elvis biopic yep. has cast Australian actress Olivia de Jong to star as Priscilla Presley. Priscilla Presley, that's Elvis Presley's wife or daughter? Wife. Wife. I believe but his daughter met, he, is he met, st- still well and truly alive. Yeah, Jamie Lee Presley, I believe. I have no idea. Yeah, I believe I'm her not name is Jamie a, Lee Presley. Look, yeah, I know we just mm. mentioned how, like, people born after the year 2000 are offended, like, but we were born in the 90s. <laughs> I think, like- we're yes, not they're, expected they're, to know about Elvis. There are, yeah, there are okay. Elvis fans born in the 90s. There's no, no doubt course. about that, but I don't think either of us- I'm sorry, but like- Can really turn around and say, ain't nothing but a hound dog. And well, it's like you a just top did. Spotify list. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> no, well, that's right. I know but music, as, but like- As we just saw in um, Zombieland Double Tap, I yeah. mean, Woody Harrelson was a hardcore Elvis fan. He's over 50. So, I mean, that's kind of your yeah. demographic for Elvis. Yeah. But this is interesting in the fact that Baz Luhrmann, Australian, yep. fantastic director. I'm happy to see him getting this. Yep. I feel like he'll do a fantastic job. Casting Australians, Olivia yep. de Jong, fantastic, but also Tom fucking Hanks. Oh, I love Tom Hanks. As a, as a Everybody kid, does. maybe until I was Everybody about- Everybody does. Until I was about 18, 19, mm. I considered Tom Hanks as my favourite actor of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, like, nice. you know, the slew of actors that have come and gone mm. now, now we're well into our late 20s. Favourite Tom like, Hanks film, go. Oh. Oh. No, no, oh. no, no, no. See, the reason I have to oh think about God, this is because on. there are so many. I, my first one went to Castaway. Yeah, same. That's mine. I'm just saying. Saving Private Ryan. 
Ah, lovely. Good yeah. choice. There's, there's, let's be honest. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to choose from. But my, Toy Story. My, oh, 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 fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Big. Wait. Oh, no. That's my favorite Tim Allen performance. Yeah, Just See, it took me a very long <laughs> sidebar for a second. It took me a very long time to realize Buzz was Tim Allen. It, really? It took me until I was at least 15 to be uh, like, holy shit, that's the guy from Home Improvement. I uh, love no, that guy. We'll, we'll see. That's the thing. Like, as in, I was a Home Improvement fanatic. So, so was I. As, as soon kid. as I first time ever watched Toy Story, I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> that was I, really good. I, I love it. Oh, thank you. I've been yeah. practicing since I was like five. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, no, Tom Hanks in this as well, playing Elvis's manager. I'm yeah. looking forward to this. I don't think there's a name yet, and I don't think they've cast Elvis yet. That's going to be an interesting that's and difficult one. That's going to be a big one. one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Once they finally pull the pin on an actual Elvis, that's when I'll start taking more notice. Yeah. But for now, Baz Luhrmann, Aussie, doing good Aussie things, hiring Aussies. Love it. You know, yeah, Tom absolutely. Hanks. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Tom Shaka. Hanks may not be an Aussie, but he's welcome in my house for a beer any oh, day. dude. No, fucking. Geez, if they recast <laughs> Crocodile Dundee, fucking Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. That's fine. He could yeah, do Tom it. Hanks. That's the thing. Yeah. He could Tom, do it. Tom, yeah. I know you're listening, mate. All right. Yeah. Um, still on the slew mm. of news, which, yes. you know, isn't massive talking topic. So I just want to get this one out of the way. Uh, Jason Momoa. Yes. As we all know and love as Aquaman I, okay. and Drago. No, not Drago. What's his name in Game of Thrones? I have no idea. Uh, he was in Game of Thrones. He was. I'm a big fan. Um, no, he was in The Bad Batch on Netflix. Okay. Anyway. Look at that. He, but, Jason Momoa. Yes. Tall, handsome, rugged man. Just before you, you go into this, I just yep. want to explain. Um, when I was doing the notes last night, finalizing them all, yep. I sent Dylan an all caps message saying, I fucking tried. I'm scraping the fucking barrel <laughs> for news this week. So, yeah. Now, lead it into Listen, it. Listen, the reason I want to say this is because it does it pique my interest a little bit. But <laughs> of course it's it would. Not as much as the next few topics. Yep. Um, Jason Momoa appeared on SNL, Saturday Night Live, as yes. you'd be familiar with, this mm-hmm. week with Chance the Rapper. Yes. Uh, and flashed his nipple piercing, shock and awe. Well, okay. Literally, the only. Re- Did you have the link open? Uh, let's have because a look. Because I have the link open here, and this is the literally the only fucking reason I put this. Okay, no, I don't. I'm going to open it up, yeah. though. So, for anybody watching. The only watching- reason I put this in the news was okay, so Jason Momoa's had his shirt off many times, okay? Yeah, it's We've seen, we seen before. him without and with nipple piercings. Yeah. Read that headline for me and tell me why I'm fucking annoyed. Okay, SNL, Jason. So this is from a website called The Rap. Yes, before- The Rap are actually good. I get quite a few of our sources from them, but okay, continue. cool. So, um, SNL, Jason Momoa flashes nipple earrings. There you go. That's all it is. That just, I, I, I saw the link and I was like, I'm sorry, nipple earrings? I'm sorry, nipple earrings? Okay, I, I, I'm a guy who I've had snake bites since I was 17. My septum pierced since I was 18. Yeah. I've had stretched ears. I've still got an industrial. It just like really drove me up the wall that some like, you know, snobby, I assume, person's writing this report and they just call them earrings. I'm sorry, you're, you're literally- um, defeating yeah, your own Tom, purpose there. Tom Geller. Yeah. Tom, article Tom, publisher Tom, of Tom Gear. Tom Gear. Yeah. Oh, it's an I, is it? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. But no, that's all it was. That's literally- I don't care that he took his shirt off or flashed his nipple piercings. I yeah. don't care. Just call them piercings. We okay? all do that from time to time. No, that's right. Nah, no, you're not going <laughs> to catch me this time, SNL. But yeah, just- I'm sorry. Nipple earrings. Nipple I mean, earrings. They're clearly Listen. not nipple earrings when they're in the fucking nipple. Yeah. I mean, we can say this as pierced men that- if you have a type of piercing that's mm. designed for a particular body part and mm-hmm. you wear that particular piercing elsewhere, mm. it's then called that particular body part. So, so, so ring. this this one in my nose here, this is a nose piercing. This is for YouTube, by the way. So tune out if you're listening. No, no, no. But they understand they can get the visual. Yeah. But it's called my septum piercing because it's in my septum. I don't call it my nose earring. <laughs> okay. It's as simple as that. Yeah. These are lip rings. I don't call them my lip earrings. Yeah. Why would I do that? That's like, stupid. So this po- this this yeah, this I'm segment sorry. has nothing to do with Jason Momoa. No, it's no, more no. about Tom Gear. Yeah, that, that, fucking that, that, up a headline. That's it. Dude, just do your pre-research before you put that in a headline on your website. This is something that frustrates. That's all it is. Now we're on the topic of journalism. Oh, here we go. This is something that does frustrate me from time to time. Where. <laughs> journalism isn't something that I look at on a regular basis. I don't read a news mm. articles mm. unless we're looking at something like, you know, for the podcast or based on a particular pop culture topic yeah. that I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. And it drives me fucking mad mm. when an article, which is a hundred words long yeah. and there's like misspelling and grammar in it. It's like you yeah. you went yeah. to journalism. You, know, you probably did. No, but probably went say, to college. Let's say, like, for example, you went to university to mm. study journalism yeah. and you- Type these things up on computers. Yeah. Nothing's handwritten anymore. Mm. 
and you still can't use spell check, or yeah. if you do, you're too fucking lazy with it and rely on it. Like, yeah. if you're going to be writing articles for news websites, mm. check your spelling and grammar, yeah. please. Yeah. It drives it's, me fucking mental. It's a very basic thing, but it is a yeah. very basic thing, and it drives mm. me nuts. See, that's the thing in our notes. I'm not perfect. I, I, I don't go out of my way to be perfect, but that's because I'm not publishing it. Yeah, we're not publishing. I'm this not publishing to the our public. private notes for the world to see. You know, that's this right. is just between him and I. If he wants to make fun of me, he can. Yeah, that's fuck fine. You. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> but we've spent, man, okay, we were light on news. Yeah. I think we're we're deep on time right yeah, now. All right. So, like, we've touched nothing. Joker. Joker. Let's yes. touch Jokers. All right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. Yes. Joker has, as we discussed last week, I think it was about 12 million off becoming the highest rated R film. Yep. Boom. Smashed it out of the park. Well and truly. Very simple. It yeah. smashed it, it. It overtook Deadpool. So last week it was fourth. It was behind uh, Matrix Reloaded yeah. with about 740 million. Just this last week and a half or so, it's gone up another 110 million. It smashed Deadpool by already 65 million. Yeah. And it's still going strong and still tying Malif- Maleficent domestically in America, but yep. internationally Maleficent just pipped it, but it's still killing it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, I think, if my calculations are correct, the seventh film this year to get to a billion. That's it, I crazy. I going to scrape it. And that, yeah. that just says the sentiment that we've been talking about since day one of TCTP is that yes. cinema is alive and well despite Ooh, yeah. all these streaming services. Although because- I will say we've contributed probably- thousands of dollars ourselves <laughs> just to view these movies yeah because people mm. like us still love going Absolutely. to the cinema and not only that but i think if everybody went to their favorite movies once these yeah. movies wouldn't make anywhere near as what are you doing you're picking uh, the spider webs out of your hair no no one of my roots fell out oh <laughs> <laughs> that's not the first time a root's fallen out um yeah so joker is a testament <laughs> Fuck. to de- uh, no so i think like joker <laughs> No, I can't bring it up. I cannot bring it up. Okay, you can tell me off air. Yes. Joker, Deadpool, Deadpool 2, mm-hmm. and maybe Logan. Because we've got Re- Matrix mm. Reloaded and It in between, but yeah, yeah. they're fairly high budget movies. But yeah. De- Joker, Deadpool 2, Deadpool, and Logan yeah. are deliberately lesser budget Hollywood films. They're like yeah. $50, 60000000 million. I was going to say, I, I'd say between 60 to about 80 Yeah. Yeah. But that's considered mm. low budget filmmaking no, uh, for this day and age. For, for this return. For this hundred percent, yeah. Mm. Well, not only that, for this return, just you've like you look below. You've got higher budgeted yeah. movies that made less. But I think this goes to show, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I'll mm. keep saying it. Whether you lower the budget or you have a budget that fits your cinematic li- uh, uh, style, yeah. If you film and create the movie that you want to make, and you're given the freedom to be creative, they will come. They will come. That's right. It makes bank, and I think mm-hmm. this is a testament to show. Uh, and ev- all film studios like Universal, yeah. Paramount, the lot mm. that if you've got a you know a, an established director, someone like Todd Phillips, for example, yeah. Yeah. or Tim Miller, like you know with Deadpool and, and all that, of course, that if they've got ideas and it's a bit left field, yeah, just let them have at it. Yeah, exactly. You know? That's right. We've, t- we've spoken many times about letting people have that creative freedom. Yes, and. The, 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 this Joker in particular is just the perfect example. Yeah. Just, just let these people go. If it's a good idea, just let them do it. Yeah. And you can uh, yeah. see what happens, you know? I've got some great news that's coming up in our uh, Friday episode regarding a particular movie that we watched recently that does have complete Ooh. creative freedom because the studio didn't want to do it. Oh. Very oh. interesting. Mm, yeah. Yes. Make sure you tune in Friday at 8, uh, 7.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Mm. Wake up with TCTP. Anyway. Yeah. On your drive to work. Um, yes, if uh, you quick shout, quick sh- sorry, just quick shout out to the 17th highest rated R film, The Untouchables. Yeah. That's the French film I recommended back in like episode six. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Anyway. Um, yeah. Did, so what's did we the- say the numbers? Uh, what, the Joker? The, the dollars? Yeah. Yeah, I did say it's up to 852. Yeah. Because yeah. last week- Million. When we ch- Holy shit. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's why I think it's going to reach the billion and- Become the seventh one this year, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. But speaking of filmmakers and giving, mm. you know, freedom to those who want to be creative, somebody yes. who has had the ability to be creative with their filmmaking over the decades oh, yeah. uh, came out and had a little bit of controversy surrounding him lately. And we have discussed mm. it previously on a previous episode how his opinion of the current cinematic slate, mm. specifically Marvel movies, yes. are a lesser form of art and they're yeah. more akin, akin to 
theme parks rather than yes, films. It, it, it's just an exhilarating thrill ride. Rather than an emotional That's storytelling right. experience. But now, if you're we'll, unfamiliar with that, mm. Martin Scorsese, if you don't know who he is. Or Scorsese. Or Scorsese, however you want to pronounce mm-hmm. it. Uh, he's produced The Irishman. Um, yes. He did Goodfellas. Yes. Uh, is it Great Gatsby? Did he do Great Gatsby? No, no, no. that was Baz Luhrmann. Baz Luhrmann. Mm. Okay. What, what's one I'm thinking of that came out around the he same did, did time? The, the Departed. Uh, just saying. There was another yeah. one that he did anyway. anyway. Yes, yeah, so he he he'd come out and cop flack from a lot of people, Robert Downey Jr., James Gunn, about his comments that they're just thrill rides, like as in they're not actual theater, they're not film, yeah. it's not art. I get where but he's coming from, but if you come- want to hear all about that, go tune exactly. back to our older he- episodes. Exactly, and he's just come back to um, like kind of trying. I assume just like take the pressure off him a little bit because the Irishman's due out any day now as well. <laughs> yeah. But also, he's yeah, he's just come out and said that it's a new form of art. So, yeah. he's trying to just save grace here and save face. So, I've got so, a, a note mm. here from exactly what he said. Yeah. Um, so, this is from a website called The Wrap. Again, we've got another article. Oh, but this is, looks like there's got some actual, you know, editing in this, which is good. So, that means, you know, like correct spelling and grammar. But Did you see who the article was by? Is it the same fucking I don't guy? know. I was just going to say. Let's have, just a, have look. a quick check. No, no, Sean Birch. Thank Sean you, Birch. Sean Birch, for the TCTP news today. Mm, <laughs> anyway. Yes. So, during an interview with ET, which is Entertainment Tonight- Something like yes. that? Anyway. ET is entertainment tonight. You having a snooze over there? Score says he oh, says his main that. worry is that investing so heavily in comic book movies will push out talented filmmakers that aren't interested in making them. I think that's a load of shit. Mm-hmm. Um, 100%. Because other filmmakers who aren't making comic book films are crushing it. Yes. You know? Anyway, mm. my concern is losing the screens to massive theme park films, which I say again, they are their own form of art, a yes. new form of art. Mm. So he's he's still standing by what he says. Yeah. And I agree with he's what tr- he says. He's trying to clarify what he said or justify yes. it. Yeah. Mm. Cinema is changing. We have so many venues. There are so many ways to make films so enjoyable. Fine. Go. And it's an event. Uh, wait, what? Oh, sounds like Sean Birch. We gave him too much credit. Yeah, too much credit. Anyway. Yeah. No, but anyway, I, I understand what he's saying there. He's just trying to, like, save grace, but also still stick to his point, not back yeah. down. Yeah, like, he's mm. just standing up for his opinions of, like, the modern okay. cinematic okay. landscape. Okay, so as far as I can see, he's basically saying, coming from his world of, like, art making film and serious film and like yeah. all that all of that process he's saying he's worried that there'll be films like that from talented directors and writers who don't aren't able to get a screen they'll because be wasting they're wasting their too talent. wasting too much script no 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 even if they are making those films that Martin Scorsese says he's a, 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 a saying is art yeah he's saying they won't get the opportunity for distribution yeah because those screens are getting taken up by these thrill park theme park rides i i get that i yeah. understand that concept mm. but at the I same time that, you're not going to stop it at the same time when when was the last superhero movie in the movies right now yeah right i'm, I'm being serious like as in they're not fucking taking up every screen yeah but the one I- that we just talked about is based on a previous established comic book series based on a superhero joker oh okay yeah my apologies yeah but still yeah. i mean that one deserves the screens because it's actual art bro. Yeah, but yeah. anyway and yeah. it's not really a superhero film anyway it's a different I, form, I but- still i still love scorsese i still love everything he's done i'm still going to love everything he's going to do because yeah. he's fantastic at what he does but i also have the appreciation for all the other different art forms that there are in film that's exactly right so yeah. i don't mind if they take up screens yeah, neither do I. Because as as that. you know, on Give a week, us something to review. Yeah, absolutely. You every know? Friday, every Friday, TCTBR, yeah. whatever it is. Ah, cool. TCTBTCR. Anyway. Um, let's have mm. a look at a few things now. We've mm. got a few gaming notes. Uh, yes. as we go oh, through. Did we want to just quickly touch on um, CB, CNN, and HBO Max? Ah, yes. Are just putting. Yes. Uh, they they put, they're trying to work together to put together an Anthony Bourdain documentary. Yeah. Which I'm quite interested in because he was a very open, wild character. Yeah. And ended his life ended in tragic circumstances. Unfortunately, but I would be very curious to see what kind of story they tell because he was an open book of all of the shit that he went through and did. Yeah. So and I'm, his I'm TV show where he travelled the world trying yeah. like you know foods and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Very interesting guy. If you want to hear yeah. about his death and a different opinion yeah. on it, go watch Dave Chappelle's latest fucking comedy special. Yeah, well, yeah that's true. Yeah, if you want to hear like the real truth about it, but yeah. at the same time, like I think that'll mm. be interesting. You know, no, like Anthony Bourdain's an interesting guy, and he has millions mm-hmm. of fans all around the world, especially in chefs. Everybody I oh. know who's a chef is like a. They Huge fan of this guy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Time. Yeah, so I would definitely be keen to check this out. There's one particular moment from that show that I randomly flicked over one day and he's just doing a narration. There's subtitles down the bottom for some reason. Yeah. Turns it over and it's just him talking about, oh, I would have another glass of wine, but right now I'd rather go up to my room, get naked and watch porn all night. Yeah, fuck And yeah. I was like, 
oh, okay. I yeah. thought this was about food, but <laughs> he's yeah. an honest, honest, honest no, guy. Exactly, yeah. that's right. So I'd be curious to see a documentary about his kind of story. So yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, man. Cool. Um, so which gaming news did you want to talk? Uh, I know which. I want to look about the big one. Uh oh. Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. Ubisoft so. has delayed. <laughs> Ubisoft has delayed its 2020 release titles because they uh, stocks plummeted 16% after this news. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. But I, I think, just wanted to touch on that because I it's think, not that big, but it's pretty big. Listen, it, for a company mm. that, that relies on not only the success of its games, but also has to impress shareholders. Exactly. You know, I work for a company that has shareholders. Yes. I get that concept. Yeah. Um, but- they announced this, that they're pushing those three back because they're overhauling their development process. Yes. And then next minute, 16% drop. So, that's millions of dollars just bam yeah. because of this news. So that's- The thing ooh. is, though, you got to take the risk and look at this from this perspective. They've released oh, a game recently. Yeah. I think it was- I think they released uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to have to look that up very quickly to see uh-huh. if that was then because I yeah. haven't got it. Hold on a second. No, that's fine. I'm just going to keep talking about myself because I had a great day. And yeah. So- yeah. Mm. Good that you had a great day. But yeah, Ubisoft, you. Uh, the publisher for a lot of great games, actually, yes. they've released uh, a game recently called Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon, mm-hmm. which is like, from what I've seen of it, it's like an open world espionage military style shooter. You know, it's got yeah. a few celebrity cameos in it, like the guy from The Walking Dead uh, mm. and Punisher. What's his name? Uh, I'm not sure. But the- it's going to kill me. No, that's uh, fine. But mm. like- the game came out and they realized they fucked up. Okay. The game wasn't good. Okay. Uh, apparently, it was a bit all over the place. There was riddled with glitches at launch. It mm. just was a t- complete failure. So, fair enough. They're going, well, listen, we've had this particular game creation style that hasn't done us any favors. Yeah. If anything, it's it's dampened our reputation. Mm. Let's spend a bit more time and overhaul our thinking of how we create games yeah. and push the games that we have currently in the works yeah, to back make, a bit, yeah. to spend a bit more time and perfect them a bit more. That's why mm. Doom Eternal, for example, was yeah. pushed back because it wasn't they, quite They realised it wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah. that's no. correct. Uh, same with The Last of Us Part 2. That's Last, right. Last of yeah. Us 2. Mm. You'd rather them spend a bit more time mm. and go, no, we want to make this, f- we want this to be done because the yeah. gaming industry is fucking chock full of broken games. And we'll yeah. get into Fallout 76 in a fucking minute. You yeah. tune in I and cut you stay off. tuned. My- no, don't worry, but this is an yeah. interesting topic. Mm. If you look at it from a business perspective, yeah. if you look at it from a, I'll try this again. If you look at it from a business perspective, <laughs> fair enough, they may lose sixteen percent of their, yeah. their stock market at the moment. But if they proceed into the future by mm. releasing complete games, which yes. are focused yep. and finished, mm. and as a, and I want to reiterate, focused, yes, that that share price will go back up oh, because absolutely. they this will be is, producing. This yeah. is purely an immediate reaction because the profits that they were expecting from that are now pushed back. That's correct. So, of course, yeah. the shareholders are like, whoa, shit, you know? Yeah. Like, as, in, as far as I'm concerned, it's as simple as that. Yeah, but not only that, when no. they start pushing out better titles exactly. and better games, yeah. like, that'll just bring it all back in. It'll tenfold it. It'll it'll make yeah. it so much in, better. In the long run, it's a great decision, but it's Watch Dogs um, Legion, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and one other one, and... Uh, what, uh, sorry, Watch Dogs Legion, Ghost Recon Quarantine, and Gods and Monsters are the three in particular that have, that have been pushed back. Yeah. But speaking of shit news. Yeah. Take it away. Anybody out there in the gaming realm at the moment would be familiar with the debacle that's happened this week yeah. with a game called Fallout 76. Now, Fallout 76 mm. is developed by Bethesda Softworks, which is the same company that released Skyrim in the Elder Scrolls series and yes. the most recent Fallout games. Mm. Anyway, Fallout 3 was good. Fallout mm-hmm. 4 was okay. Yep. Fallout 76 was their most recent venture, which yep. was completely online. So, like, okay. it's a, a, kind of like an open... So, if you aren't familiar with Fallout, open world... Yeah. So, it's mm. an open world uh, post-apocalyptic I was going to say, some kind of apocalyptic, apocalyptic theme. Yeah, you can tell mm. by the name. Mm. Anyway, Fallout 76 was complete fucking rubbish when it came out. Okay. It was broken. It was buggy. It was fucked. And people mm. expected more considering Bethesda's a massive AAA title publisher. Okay. But they're... Over the past few years, each new release that they release, which they mm. develop in house, has had more and more and more and more and more bugs. Now, what we just discussed okay. with Ubisoft pushing their games back to making them complete, yep. they don't want to do this. Yep. They want to release finished games. As mm-hmm. when Bethesda gets a game to a point and they just release it. Yeah. And it hasn't really been fixed and it's a 12 month old game. Okay. The, the, the news that's come out recently this yeah. week is that they've announced a 
subscription service to a broken game which is already 12 months old. Really? Yes. Okay, I saw the subscription service news and I just assumed there'd be something new. Uh, no. So, okay. it's within the Fallout 76 game itself. It's called Fallout First. Okay. You. So, this is all in US dollars. So, this will like be like- a little more than half, like the price. So, for example, like in Australia, like well, it's like, it's like ten US dollars is about seventeen for us. Yeah, it, well, it's, mm. tw- it's thirteen dollars a month US. Or, okay, so you're looking at about twenty bucks Aussie. Yep, mm. or one hundred dollars per year for this subscription. <laughs> so about one hundred sixty seventy yeah. bucks. So not only are you paying a consistent high price for a to continue to play a game which is broken and what? busted and not completed and terrible in the first place, the things you get. Are rubbish. What? what are, which are? It's what? What, what it's, are the things that they're trying to entice so people with? I don't have the exact list here, but let's mm. say you get in-game currency. Okay. You get a new skin, which is from a previous uh, Fallout entry, which you can walk around in. It's first person, basically, anyway, so you'll barely see it. Okay. You also get an unlimited, like, stash box. So, like, that way, when you're walking around and scavenging the environment- You can grab whatever you want as much as you want. So, basically, the lock that's been put or programmed, sorry, Mm. in your inventory is unlocked. That's what you get out of this. Inventory, yeah. Inventory, yep. Mm. And then the other thing as well was, like, you spawn in and you- Instead of going into an open world where other players from random servers can come in and play with you, which yeah. was the, the the draw for Fallout 76, yeah. which yeah. didn't work, okay. you now get your own private world, which you can play with your friends, which every every single other I open world say, game has already without a fucking prescription. Subscription. Subscription, mm. sorry. But prescription. Doctor, doctor, <laughs> doctor, save me from this fallout. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but not only that, like you also get in-game currency called atoms, which you can spend on in-game that's, purchases. That's V bucks for the Fortnite fans out there. Basically, yeah. This is fucked. What the fuck? All right. So, do yeah. they actually think they? Well, that's the thing. Do you? Uh, you probably don't know, but how many actual regular players they have currently? In this broken game. It's because no the way, way you're is- describing it, it's like there's 12 people who are still playing because it's like, it's Fallout. Do they actually think they're going to get a lot of people to get this? Like The, the world is on fire. Yeah, I was going to- Like, they're, they're- That just sounds terrible. If your game's that fucked and you yeah. know it, why the fuck are you trying to get more money out of That's it? That's correct. Yeah, You've the game- already These people are already pissed because they've already paid for the game. Yes. And now you're going to say, hey, if you sign up- more expensive than Netflix. Yes. You're going to- That's sh- so shit. Like, this, so this bad. This is greed yeah. at its finest. You're, yeah. You're getting more code for a mm. game which is busted, which isn't going to fix that original game. No. For an additional price out of your pocket, you know, but every also fucking month. Al- al- almost half of the things that you mentioned as bonuses are things that should already be included. Yes. That is, is the biggest is, argument. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I mean, seriously, like- <laughs> See, it would make sense for a game like Fortnite to do this because they would rake in and people would be clamoring. Well, that's the thing. But the they thing have is- a free game to begin with. No, that's and right. And then yeah. what, you, what you purchase doesn't really enhance your play, uh, your uh, winning ability. Oh, no, it's no, literally no. just it, like it's skins it's and things. Aesthetics. Yeah, that's but, right. Yeah. No, but if, if Fortnite did this, it would make sense because they would rake it in. But at the same time, Fortnite already has everything that people want. Yeah. They, they don't need to try and like, hey, come and do this. People are willingly turning over V-Bucks, buying V-Bucks because the game's not fucked. Yeah. The game is as simple as it can be and it gives everybody what they want. There's one thing I've just this thought about. This is just stupid. This is purely, purely a money-making tactic. Yeah. Okay. And I oh. think I've just had this thought. It's come to me. It's occurred to me recently. Is that Live. They, live on air. It's live in TCTP Studios. Dylan. They are currently developing uh, Skyrim- Six, I think it is. So no, not Skyrim. Sorry, the uh, Elder Scrolls Six, which oh, okay. is the next one. Which yep. Skyrim was fucking enormous. People, it came out like mm. however many years ago. People still play it. It's a massive game, but yeah. it's done. Yeah, um, they're still developing that. That makes me think that this is more like, hey, we kind of need the budget to finish this next fucking thing. Where are we going to get uh, this from? Okay, let's create a subscription service to bring in that constant stream of money. Whether people actually play it or not, it's none of their business. Yeah, but that's going to. In- but at the same time, they still need people to pay for it. They still need people to pay for yeah. it. And- and, I don't and from think- what, what we've seen with the reactions and stuff, surely they're going to get a hell of a lot more negative press than positive they have, out of this. And they have been over the years and mm. it's continuing. But the yeah. shit thing about it is that people are blaming Bethesda, the company themselves. Mm. It's not necessarily them. It's mm. the uh, the developing side of Bethesda because okay. Bethesda 
own or uh, are in tandem with a lot of mm. other studios like id for example id yeah. software with doom yeah. where they are happy to push the development back mm. and also for the for the release price release a whole bunch of fucking mm. additional content with it without charging more yeah. money for it no, so it's it's purely bethesda softworks get your shit together kill this thing it's already dead yeah and uh, gang gang listen, motherfucker take it from ea's perspective listen they're du- they're digging themselves out of the hole mm. that they've buried, dug for themselves just listen to their slogan ea it's in the game i mean come on anyway i think it's time for <gasps> oh are we gonna ready? do it to them yes are we gonna do it to them we're gonna do the to them oh yeah. okay all right <clears throat> it's time for yes or pass. Excited or blah blah. blah. <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you still have eardrums, welcome to Yas or Pass for the week. Yeah, this what is an absolutely pa- disgusting theme song. I know, and I apologize for that in advance. That was an improv moment that I regret. Yeah. Anyway, Yas or Pass is where we talk about the uh, upcoming films to the theaters this week. Yep. This uh, Wednesday, Thursday. The man, what's the date? What's tomorrow? The thirtieth of October. All right, sweet. That'll work. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, no. Uh, the new uh, pictures. Co- no, no. Yes. I meant tomorrow for the listeners is Halloween. Ooh, and that's the release date for all of these scary movies. Ooh, yes, I, I will just say, like, uh, th- this year, our release date for this week falls on Halloween. And we have one somewhat horror-ish movie, and it's... Not going to be a good one. And unfortunately, that's it. And I'm very disappointed in the planning and the scheduling. Yeah, mm. because there could have been a great horror film to release around Halloween, which, as you said, is having one screening here yes, in Newcastle, it, Australia. It, it, it's already screened elsewhere in the in the world, and we were so excited for it to come. It didn't seem like it was going to come. And then it comes out Halloween night for one screening while I'm at fucking work. Yep. Free from hell, the Rom Zombie film. I've been waiting for this last piece of the trilogy and unfortunately we don't get to see it we'll have to wait nope. for it to come onto a service or digital rent yeah which i will but be doing speaking of kind of horror exactly w- that's what i mean like this, yeah. this is the this is the best we get on halloween for a premiere movie but 47 meters down uncaged the story of four bffs who go on a once in a lifetime diving exp- trip to see a beautiful lost city underwater Ooh. neck minute they stuck upwards of 47 meters down in a cave oh and sharks from the director of the strangers two and 47 meters down uh pass yeah no this is a blah blighted blighted yeah okay. i only saw half of like 47 meters down and yeah it didn't do it for me. I went to the cinema to see 47 Meters Down. Oh, why and I, do that? Oh, it was a slow weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we watched it. And, mm. like, I've never been much of a fan of, like, yeah. animal horror movies. Yeah. I like them, like Jaws and Crawl no. and things like yeah. that. But I don't think they're necessarily scary. I'm, no. I'm scared by supernatural things or aliens. No, you well, know? see, as we discussed when we did go and see Crawl, which is actually above average, and it's just come out on digital rent if you yeah. want to go and check that out. As we discussed, it wasn't so much the crocodiles that was the problem. It was the weather. Yes. And, and this one, this one, the thing that creeps me out, it's not the sharks. It's being stuck 47 metres down in a cage. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, uncaged this time. They're in a rock cave. Ugh. That's right. I know. Clever twist. What the twist? But yeah, no, it, that, that's what scares me more. Yeah. Being claustrophobic and stuck in a cave 47 metres under the water and not having enough air to get back up. That's that right. That terrifies yeah. me. Not the sharks because they're just doing their thing. You know? Yeah, the we're sharks just, are just swimming we're, around. We're and disturbing them. Yeah, I mean, that's come right. On. Yeah. But anyway, um, so 47 metres uncaged. That's a blah, blah, for me. I just don't give a shit. And thank you for making that the horror movie for Halloween. Yeah. Speaking but- of like the director of Strangers, <laughs> The Strangers too. Have yeah. you seen The it's- Strangers, the first one? Of course I have. It's a great movie. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It's phenomenal as well. <laughs> Liv Tyler. It's, it's yeah. a fantastic film, Strangers. Strangers 2, though. The- Pray by Night or yes, something Pray like by that? Night. Or some- I haven't yeah. watched it. Because Neither have I. No, because I know it's a- Apparently, man- it's rubbish. It's a knockoff. So, yeah, of course yeah. it is. But The Strangers, go on. Yeah, I'm- that's a big excited for me for Strangers. 100%. <laughs> yeah. But the best thing about- Sorry, sidebar. Best thing about <laughs> that film, there's no fucking music at all. There's no really? score. There's no- okay. Go back. I'll go have to back, go back and, go back and yeah. rewatch that. The only music you hear is when the record player plays. Yeah. Outside of that, there's none of that, like, tension building. <laughs> Like, you yeah, know, it, no, that's all cool. The scares are purely based on visual things. That's, that's cool. It. Yeah. Like, it, it's so good. But anyway, moving on. I'm oh, getting me excited. Yeah. Um, the second one on our list of four this week is Homeland Story, a documentary, a documentary about a man named Neville White, who in 1974 visited an indigenous tribe in Victoria 
and they changed his life. 40 years of photo and video, blah, blah, blah. So this is very localized to Australia. Yeah, this is definitely local. Um, mm. No, pass. this is a, it's a book blighted. I oh, yeah, but blighted. I'm yeah, never I'm, going to watch this. No, I that's right. Care. Exactly. I respect what it's about and all that, but that's not what I go for when I go yeah. to the movies. Simple as that. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, blighted. I apologize. I'm sure it's great. But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, the big ticket this week, Terminator yes. Dark Fate. Terminator right? Dark Fate. A documentary about a man named Neville White who in 1974 visited an indigenous tribe in Victoria and they changed his life. 40 years of photo and video. Directed by Tim Miller and written by David S. Goya. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I thought I'd chuck a little jokey joke in there because we all fucking know what this is about. We've been harping on about it for weeks. We've yes. been seeing the trailers. We all know what Terminator Dark Fate's about. Yeah. He is back. Yes. Now, the problem that I have with this movie, and I haven't mm. even seen it yet, is I'm a huge fan of Terminator 1 and 2, like of all Terminator fans. Mm -hmm. I enjoy what they were going for with Terminator yeah. 3, Salvation, and Genesis. Yeah. yeah. Because they were less horror, more mm. just action slash comedy yeah. movies with robots. Mm. The thing, like like Tim Miller is obviously a talented guy. Oh, big time. And he got to work directly with James Cameron to produce yes. Dark Fate. Mm -hmm. But I, like, I haven't watched any of the reviews, but I have seen a few posts where people are saying, yeah, it's good, but it isn't. It isn't groundbreaking in revitalizing the franchise to yeah, a right. point. Okay. I think- for for a Terminator movie, for me personally, yes, yes. to work mm. really well is to go back to the original mm -hmm. because that was a horror movie. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Terminator oh, 2 had a lot of emotion and family elements See, and bombastic action. Yes. But Terminator 1, it was fucking Halloween with robots, man. Yeah, like man. Like yeah. that shit terrifies no, me. No, 100%. The only issue I- Well, the only problem I have with what you're saying- Yep. This one isn't even out yet. Yep. You're going to have to wait at least three years. I'm <laughs> yeah. just saying, like, if that, if by some chance somebody in Hollywood yep. heard this and was like, that dude's got the right idea, I'm stealing that, yeah. we've still got to wait another three years. So, Listen, we've just got to accept what we've got yep. given to us. Listen, this I'm is, excited for uh, this. I'm looking forward to this it. Is, this is a year ask for me. Yeah. Because as much as I love T2, I've never been in, in depth with the Terminator series and that. I've yep. seen them all, but I've never loved them, you know? No, that's okay. Um, so, this is a yes for me. I'm happy for TCTBDTCR. Fucking absolutely. Of course. Yeah. It's considering three from hell. Like, go fuck yourself, Australian cinema. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, cool. I'll see it. Like, as in the trailer hasn't pissed me off as much as Gemini Man did. So, yeah. No, the Why trailer the looks good. Not? I think the movie mm. looks good and it's got good writers and directors behind that's it. That's right. Exactly. I just think that. As they've all done, they're mm. trying to recapture what Terminator uh, of 2 course. did. Yeah. And I think that's the wrong move. I no. think for this to be truly revitalized, yeah. go back to the horror element. And the the mm. Terminators since Terminator 2, yeah. they haven't had that horror aesthetic. It's more been action. Oh, big time. T T2 literally was like, all right, that's the benchmark. Yeah. Even like, Robert, that, that, that's it. Even Robert Patrick's T1000, the liquid metal Terminator, yeah. that was terrifying in yeah. its performance and its portrayal, mm -hmm. but it worked well in that movie, but they've just tried to do that over and over and over. Mm -hmm. and over. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, this one's going to introduce more violence, which we've seen in the trailer. Yeah. That is fine, but that won't make this movie for me. I but want the, 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 the smaller scale hunt hunting story yeah, of yeah. this unstoppable thing and no matter how i've mm. dreamt i've had nightmares of, not about <laughs> terminator but just this particular setting where no matter how far you run no matter where you travel yeah. you cannot escape this thing another great movie that i don't think you've seen mm. it follows have you seen it follows why does it sound familiar so it's basically like uh, so uh, not to really spoil it i would mm. say but it's like a sexually transmitted disease but what you uh, what you take essentially mm. is like this this invisible demon which only you can see which mm. walks at a snail's pace mm. but no matter how far or how where you go this thing will not stop okay right and nobody else around you can see can it, see it yeah. until you've passed it on to that person damn yeah that sounds cool no i've seen the sequel it follows herpes but <laughs> um yeah no um i don't know why you brought that up i can't remember but Terminator. just talking about yeah hunting yeah. movies where the villain have you seen this stop. boy yeah sorry go i'm just thinking of wayne's world now <laughs> yeah go see it yeah. follows. Okay. No, yeah, fair if enough. If you want a good movie of that concept. But, but Terminator Dark Fate, I'm excited. Yeah, I love Terminator. I'm a yass and I will on. happily get my tub of popcorn, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, no. Um, Absolutely. Do, do we cool. want to mention the last one? Uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. It's a par with feelings. 
That's the name of the film. A Filipino film about a young deaf man who teaches a woman basic sign language. Coming to theatres this Thursday, the 31st of fucking October. Halloween. Yeah. Mm. Listen, that's probably a fine film, but it, I don't care. It's got fantastic reviews. Yeah. But I'm honestly just bitter about the fact that Halloween fell on a Thursday, our release date for movies, and we get 47 metres down fucking uncaged. Yeah. I'm and we bitter, get a so. Terminator movie that's not a horror. Yeah. Yeah. A, a so horror Terminator would have worked. Right. Listen, I've said it like 6,000 mm. times in the last two minutes. Yeah. A horror Terminator will work. Yeah. Halloween yeah. could have happened, but mm. missed the boat. Yeah. Anyway. So this is a blotted. This is a very oh, yeah, damp end to the episode. Dep- <laughs> I know. It's, it's a bit depressing, but if you want to perk yourself up, I mean, we've got a pl- plenty of in our backlog of happy memories on Podbean, Spotify, Apple, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. YouTube. Big, Big Summer Blowout. Blowout. If you're watching mm. this, as we said, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on That's YouTube. Right. Also mm. on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts as well. Go there and subscribe there. So that mm. way you get the automatic downloads every week. Mm. Two episodes a week now for mm-hmm. TCTV. Wednesdays and Fridays. Absolutely. Every week we are coming to your fresh and from afar on Friday. But um, yes, no, yes. And also, if you're listening on the podcast, I don't know if you know this, but stay tuned for After the Music. We always just fuck around for a, like a hot 30 seconds. So, yeah, we've got some little I mean, Easter eggs. Little and also, if you're too. watching on YouTube, stay tuned for After the Music. We fuck around for about 30 seconds. But anyway, anyway. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all there. Two's Company, Three's a Podcast at gmail.com if you want to shoot us a line. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. As always, my name is Dylan along with my co-host. Mitch, what's up? Yeah. Anyway, we are Two's Company and, and you, you are, are the, the Podcast. podcast. It's hot in here, man. Uh, it, and I've still got this jacket. Yeah. I'm wearing the basketball jersey and I'm feeling a bit self-conscious about my arms today, so jacket staying on. I do have a dumbbell over there if you want to pump it up a little bit for Friday's episode. Oh, maybe I can spend the next two days working on that. <laughs> You've got plenty of time. Mm. So are you going to keep using the moisturizer as well? Oh, absolutely. It's well, perfect well, for have skin. You, have you started using it? I've been Wait, using is it yours a moisturizer or yes, a body is. lotion? It's a, well, it's a both. Uh, oh, it's a both? 